لو قال لشعر النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم شعير يكفر عند بعضهم that whoever says to the hair of the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم شعير اسمه شعير يكفر عند بعضهم he will commit kufr according to some of them and the reason why the others differed is not because they did not consider this kufr the reason for difference is because the word shu'ayr is sometimes not used to insult but what we are talking about when someone has clearly insulted and then says I did not mean he is not talking about that context when someone clearly insults the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and then says I do not intend insult and in the nomenclature of that language the wording that he has used it is an insult then he is a kafir, a murtad an example of this that someone says وَلَوْ قَالَ رَجُلٌ مَعَ غَيْرِهِ كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَسَلِمْ يُحِبُّ كَذَا if someone says to someone else that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم loved such and such thing بأن قال مثلا كان يحب القرعة that for instance he says he loved pumpkin فقال ذلك الغير أنا لا أحبه فهذا كفر that as the other person replies by saying I do not like it then he has committed kufr وَهَكَذَا رُوِيَ عَنْ أَبِي يُسْفَ رَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى عَلَيْهِ أَيْضًا it has been narrated like this from Al-Imam Abu Yusuf Rahmallahu Ta'ala and this incident of Al-Imam Abu Yusuf Rahmallahu Ta'ala is also mentioned by Mullah Ali Qari in his Shaf al-Fiqh al-Akbar and it's also in the Fatawa Hindiya showing that the one who insults the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sallam with clear words which mean insult clear words which have a meaning of insult and then he says later that I did not intend to insult that person has still insulted when they say قَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ لَا they mean those words which are not an insult at all in nomenclature then you have to look at context of what the person said you understand the difference between the two while when we look at the ibarat, the texts that are coming we will see that they do not fall into that category Al-Imam Ahmed Rida Khan rahmallahu ta'ala wrote an epistle called the Pen initially and they are translated this I bought over believe it or not it was published in 95 and I bought this uh, nearly 13 years ago 13 years ago when I was a child so we grew up on these works we grew up on these works these are were our bread and butter and this was one of the first works I read on this subject and I still have the original copy as you can tell I, the price mark that was on there I took that off at that time and that remains from that time the work is called the penalty of insulting the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam at the end they placed an addendum of the teacher of our teachers the Alama the very learned scholar of Pakistan Alama Saeed Ahmed al Kazimi, Rahmallahu Ta'ala from the children of Sayyidi Musa Kazim Rahmallahu Ta'ala a very learned scholar and he mentions in his epistle which I have in the original language also he mentions firstly Imam Shihabuddin Al-Khifaji Al-Hanafi Rahmallahu Ta'ala this is the work he is quoting Nasim Riyad Fi Shafi Shifa Al Qadi Iyad and I think you have a copy also he has Mullah Ali Qari's commentary our beloved brother is doing good work here for the cause of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah Allah preserve him in this work I'll give you the original quote from here which is very relevant this is the original passage which he is quoting he says the verdict of infidelity for insulting the Holy Prophet وسلم, will depend upon the apparent words and no consideration will be given to the intention and the purpose of the person committing the insult and the circumstances of the time this is what he says here he says وَلِذَا قَالَ إِبْنُ حَجَرٍ بعد سياق كلام المصنف وما ذكره ظاهر موافق لقواعد مذهبنا 
إذ المدار في الحكم بالكفر على ظواهر ولا نظر للمقصود النيات ولا نظر لقرائن حاله. This is that statement in the original which he's quoting. And he gives only one leeway for a new Muslim. Someone who has accepted Islam. And you know when the context of when these authors will mention a new Muslim, they will talk about a new Muslim in non-Muslim lands. So unless the people who are advocating this are new Muslims, we can, forget, we can excuse them. But people who have claimed to have done suluk, and who have claimed, who claim to stu have studied under the ulama cannot make simple mistakes. But Alama Saeed Ahmed Qadmi, after quoting this quote from Al Khafaji, this is why we believe that the people who are advocating this have not read the Shifa of Al Imam Qadi Iyad rahimahullah ta'ala, and if they have read it, then this makes their situation even worse. He states, and it's very important what he states, if this was, wasn't so, the door to insulting the Prophet وسلم, would never close because every insulter would be acquitted saying that his intention and objective was not to commit contempt. So this is silly. What the author of Iman Kufar Takfir is advocating is silly because it goes against clearly the context of which Al-Imam Subki Taala gave which was to a specific case regarding the Munafiqun and the companions of the Allah Ta'ala Anhum. Later on, the teacher of our teachers, Rahimullah Ta'ala, states, Let me say, and he states something similar to what I quoted from Al Imam Badruddin Al Hassani, Rahimullah Ta'ala. Let me say that the punishment of execution of an insult of the Holy Prophet وسلم, is a had punishment which is a right of the Holy Prophet وسلم, himself. Although insulting the Messenger وسلم, is also a cause of great torture for his Ummah to comply with such a had is the right of the Ummah as well, but not directly, rather indirectly through the Holy Prophet However, the Holy Prophet وسلم, was authorized by Allah to forego this right in the case of anyone he chose. Anyone he chose, as is proved from such some other examples regarding the injunctions of the Sharia, which show that Allah Ta'ala has given him the authority in certain matters. For example, it has been reported by Sayyiduna Barra bin Azib radiallahu ta'ala and that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had ordered uh, Sayyiduna Abu Barda uh, to sacrifice a gold kid and said, this sacrifice is not lawful for anyone else but you. Meaning he made a ruling specific to that person. So any examples where you find that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may have forgiven someone, then this was his right. And as for this quote from Al-Imam al, al it was clearly taken out of context.